Hey guys, so this is my video on uh, special algorithms for the 4x4 that usually don't occur with 3x3, such as the edge parity, the double edge parity, the corner parity, which can be avoided by using the double edge parity, and the final two edges algorithm, because that is not considered a parity, um, and center orientation parity. Um, so, I'm going to have slides, and one should play now. Okay, so the first parity is going to be when you have only one double edge pair flipped, which can never happen on a 3x3 due to uh, mathematical reasons. Um, and I don't really want to explain that, because I don't want to confuse people. Um, so the algorithm will be posted before and I will have it in an annotation below. So here it is. There. So, uh, there. That solves it. Um, I will cover the safe version of that, where you only do inner turns for the R, and outer turns for the U, and F, and all the other layers for the algorithm needed. Um, so, yeah, here you go. Next slide. Okay, so, the like I said before, there is a safe version of doing the parity algorithm, where you only do inner turns for the R, and L layer. Um, now, the reason for doing this is that if you have a case like this and you do the safe version, you'll just skip OLL entirely. Um, now, I don't see another reason for doing it unless it's like compound OLL where you know the case and that will lead to faster comprehension times. So, here you go. Um, it's difficult, it's more difficult than uh, the original one, so just keep that in mind. There you go. So, um, I will have another slide on the double edge parity and uh, the corner parity problem because I think they can be elapsed in one, uh, one algorithm. Okay, so, next slide. Okay, so this is on the double edge parity and the corner parity. Um, I find the corner parity invalid, mainly because you have to do the corner parity, which is the same algorithm as the uh, edge flipping parity, but you have to do outer layer turns. And then you have to do the double edge switching algorithm, and then you have to do the superman soon, which is way too much time. Whereas if you do know full OL, uh, OLL and PLL, mainly PLL, um, then it can be solved much faster. So here, um, for the way you can tell that this is impossible is that there's no way that you can have two uh, two by one edge pairs, and these are two uh, one by threes because. Um, but you've got to keep in mind you're solving it like a three by three. I'm sorry about the phone. Um, so it's a two by one. Uh, so you know that's impossible, so what I recognize it most by is um, a G-perm, so I'm just going to do that algorithm. It's a Rubik's Revenge, I can't help it, it locks up a lot. And then you'll see you have two edge switched, which is an easy algorithm, which I will post right now in an annotation. There you go. So, that is how you do the double edge switching algorithm. And just to prove my point on the double, the corner <sighs> parity, sorry, um, the corner parity, I will post a short video on me doing it. And just to show you how slow it is. 
Okay, so here comes the clip. I've already identified this as an impossible case unless you use parity uh, algorithms. So this is just an example clip of me doing the corner parity. So here. Okay, so as you can see, that was very slow and um, unneeded entirely uh, because of what I just showed you before. Um, now, the reason I bring up the corner parity in the first place is because um, me, myself, and Pi in his 4x4 tutorial, he mentions the corner parity. And I think he may mention the double edge parity. But... Um, I, I think he he does teach you how to solve it in a great way, and no way am I belittling, belittling him. He was the first cuber I ever met on YouTube, and he is a great uh, cube video maker. So um, that's just a point I, I want to make. So there. So this next one is an important one. This is the center switching algorithm. Uh, since this is a 4x4, there are no fixed centers, so you may move the centers around freely. Uh, as many may know, red is always going to be opposite of orange on a 3x3 because it has a fixed center, as you can see on this core. Um, so if you just take a look at it, you'll have white on the front, then there's going to be blue on the top, and red's always going to be to your right. Okay. Now. If you look on this, white and blue are all good, but if you know the opposite colors, red and green, red is always going to be opposite orange, which is wrong because they're right next to each other, adjacent to each other. So the algorithm I use is basically intuitive because it's easy, but I will still post the algorithm below and in the previous slide. So here we go. And the two layer turns are optional. And the good thing with this algorithm is that you, if you forget the uh, center orientation when you are solving the cube as a 3x3, three three, and you're, um, a good thing is, is that you can do the algorithm that I just showed you, and it does not disrupt any, um, disrupt any edge pairs. So that is just a, that's just a very convenient thing to have. Okay, now the last one will be on the last two edge pairs. Um, which is not parity, um, but it is a algorithm that I find very necessary to know um, because, well, you're kind of without a place, you know. Um, so here we go. Next slide. So this is the last algorithm for this video. It's where you have two adjacent edges swapped, and they're the last ones. But you can also use it if you get this case with other edges. Um, uh, I find this algorithm to be easy, and there should be an annotation below stating it, and the previous slide will state it. So you can just pause it and memorize it. So, first, this isn't part of the algorithm because it varies uh, due to how you solve it, maybe horizontally or vertically, or the way the edges are. Um, so what you want to do is you want to move the either side to the adjacent side, so this side still has green white but the green white would have been flipped different so just do the algorithm that is posted below now it's a 4x4 four four rubik's so I can't help it if it pops there you go so there is the algorithm. Um, I really do hope that these al these algorithms helped you on your 4x4 solves, help you get faster times, and remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, rating makes me feel happy. I don't know, subscribing, it just means, you know, that people are watching your videos. Uh, there's just a special feeling about that. Uh, subscribe, 
that's just a given. And uh, comment, you know, tell me what you think. Uh, PM me if you have any questions. Um, and hopefully I will make more videos to help you guys. Um, bye.